Hello everybody, this is Katie J, and I just want to tell you that every single time that me and Christian do these shows, it never fails when we record that the audio just goes out on us. Uh, he, he loses connection or he goes in and out. Um, it doesn't really happen on my side because I'm recording directly into my mic and he's all the way in Las Vegas and we're doing this over Skype. Um, but don't worry, I'm working on a plan to get that fixed. Uh, so just bear with us for the time being and enjoy this show. The show's, it's like we just keep getting better and better. This is, like I said, last show was one of our best, but this really is because every single second is just filled with, with banter and back and forth and some really good, good feedback on a lot of the news and how we felt about these movies. And we also have a little surprise for you guys at the end. So I hope you guys enjoy and let's get on with the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome to the newest episode of Revenge Reviews. I am your host, Katie J, and with me as always is Christian Scott. Christian, how are you, my friend? I'm all right. I'm okay. What about you? Uh, overall, I'm absolutely fantastic, except for <laughs> the movie that you made me watch, and there's a bit of a change for the movie that we're going to review. Uh, Christian, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Yeah, well, originally the plan was to watch Movie 43, um, which was on Netflix, but then it was taken down, and it's not on Hulu or Amazon Prime or anything, and I, I refused to pay money to watch that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, we were not going to rent it. So instead, we just went with another choice, which was, I think, probably... I, I haven't seen movie 43, but I can't imagine it being a lot worse than what we actually watched. We, I, when picking the movie to watch this time, I thought, what better place to go than to the Adam Sandler well <laughs> with The Cobbler? And, you know, God damn, like, I swear to God, like, Adam Sandler's gonna be the death of us, because as much as we're gonna shit on this movie... I think the Adam Sandler well of movies is a pretty good place for us to go every once in a while. Just like, you know, we really can't think of anything else. Hey, Adam Sandler just fucking shat out another one. Let's go to that. So, Happy Madison is doing. Now, speaking of Happy Madison, I tried to watch Joe Dirt 2 last night. Ooh, I can't imagine how bad that is. <laughs> it's. Okay, do you like the first movie? Eh, it's alright. It's got some good it's likes. Like... I liked it when I was a kid, yeah, like, it's, it's like, dude, where's my car? I feel yeah, like if I watched dated. it now, I probably wouldn't like it as much, but I don't hate it. Yeah, it's, it's got some good laughs still. Yeah, this second one is, for one, it's shot like a Funny or Die video or something. Like, it's Ew. shot like an online video. It's not shot like a movie. Like, they took some, like, new digital camcorder and fucking put it on a tripod? <laughs> it's just weird, yeah. It's just, it's not a good movie. Like, I, I got maybe 15 minutes in, and then I went over to watch Rugrats. Yeah, that's a better choice. And the episode ended with the Rugrats urinating on a tree, and I was like, I made the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> I regret nothing. Yeah, see, that's the better choice. Like, having a cartoon babies pee on things is a lot better than watching some animal pee on Adam Sandler. And, like... I know this is a really stupid complaint, but it bothered me. Maybe they explain it in the movie. In the end of Joe Dirt 1, he got a new wig. Remember the dreadlock-looking yeah. wig? Yeah. Not in this movie. In the beginning, he still has his mullet. Um, am I am I foolish for trying to look for continuity in here? A Probably. Bit. A it was bit. weird. <laughs> well, Joe Dirt 2. Put that one on the list. 
<laughs> I don't want to watch that ever again. I watched a good 10, 15 minutes. I can't. Like, <laughs> it's not funny. It's it's not, I don't, it's, it's not a movie either. It's just this weird series of vignettes and Mark McGrath is there for some reason. Well, they had fucking uh, Kid Rock in the first one. Why not have another obscure white guy? Why didn't they just bring him back? Why Mark McGrath? I don't, well, I don't get this, it. Like, you know how the 90s nostalgia is just trying to fight its way with the 80s nostalgia we got going on? Like, uh -huh. Mark McGrath is, I guess, the fucking chosen child for the 90s nostalgia. I don't, it was weird. Uh, like, it was nice to look at the girl who plays uh, Brandy, or whatever the girl that Joe Dirt likes. She's in a bunch of shit. Yeah, like, her, Joe Dirt, and, and she's a good. I guess Christopher Walken is back. I didn't get to the part where he came back. Uh. But it was just, it was bad. There's like a weird, really unfunny five minute sequence of them like speaking into her vagina as she gives birth. Ew. Ew. And it's not funny. Like the nurse is like smoking and Joe's like, are you, should you be smoking or delivering my babies? And like, that is enough for a little bit for a little joke, right? But they keep going on and she's like, No, well I'm a doctor, I could do what I want. And like the whole shot is like shot from her vagina looking outward. Uh. Uh, so you have like just their faces in camera and then like Joe Dirt's face keeps popping in and this the gag runs for like five minutes. It's bad. Okay, so yeah, Joe Dirt two sucks ass. <laughs> That's pretty much my point, yes. Alright, so you know, we'll put that on the list somewhere far down the line, and yeah, we'll come back to it later. But I don't, I don't want to. But yes. But uh, let's let's get into some news. News, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll start the smaller ones off first. So the title for the new Ben Affleck movie is called The Batman. That's a, I mean, some people say it's a boring title, and I guess it is. But as long as they make a good movie, I don't care. I, I just want a good movie. I like the title. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. Like, I don't really like it or dislike it. I just... If they let Ben Affleck do his thing, it's going to be a great movie. Oh, well, well, we'll see. But, um, <laughs> I don't know. Just as, as the title goes, I dig it. Um, the bad guy... Uh, that shot, I'm, I'm down. Hmm. I'm cool with it. Yeah. I just want to um, be with The only title I, I really don't like, which, I mean, not counting like the Schumacher movies because those are shit, is I wasn't crazy about Dark Knight Rises as a title. Yeah. I mean, if anything, that's like Dark Knight Retires. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, no, just because it feels like weird that they did like Batman Begins and then Dark Knight and then another Dark Knight title, Dark Knight Rises. Like when that movie was first coming out, I remember people were saying um, just Gotham as mm -hmm. the title. That would have been fucking awesome. Yeah, that that would have actually been pretty cool. Just yeah, Batman Gotham or something like that. That have been yeah. cool. But, you know, whatever. Um, all right, so as is the norm, I guess, for these DC movies now, Suicide Squad's getting an extended cut. You know, me and you have talked about this on air, right? <laughs> now, here's the thing. If you have to, like, if you have to release an extended version in order to make your movie good, you're not making good movies. You're admitting that you're making garbage the apology edition is what they should call it like the lord of the rings extended edition you don't uh -huh. need those to appreciate and like lord of the rings it's just... i disagree i think that saruman's death is crucial that's... and i hate they cut that out but that's the one thing yeah like that's one part of like six hours of film <laughs> 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 like like, with that one thing, do you need... Like, can you appreciate and understand and like Lord of the Rings? Okay, yes, I see what you're getting at. <laughs> like, they can't do this with one goddamn movie. Man of Steel, they didn't have an extended cut. Didn't they? 
No, but that was back when they like. Oh, when know, they still believed a, in their properties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they had an idea of what they kind of wanted to do. <laughs> so like, th- this basically just tells me that the the executives don't know what the hell they're doing. Nope. No. In Marvel, I trust. <laughs> I don't. I'm curious what it'll be, because like. Even if they add some things in, I think a lot of that movie is kind of like my opinion of Batman versus Superman, the extended cut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a better movie. Like I won't deny that it flows better, but those big problems are still problems. Like the movie doesn't fix Lex Luthor. It doesn't fix why they fight and why they stop fighting. Those are still big problems. Suicide Squad has problems. I don't know how it'll be fixed with just more scenes. You know what I mean? Yeah, like. I, I get what you mean, because I've already looked into the story of uh, Suicide Squad and everything. I've, I've heard some reviews. Here we go. What? Just watch it, all right? I, I, don't, oh, all right. I don't... Fine. What were you saying? I didn't mean to uh, cut you off. All right, what I was saying was that the story that they had originally was chopped apart and redone, like, twice. So the problems that were in it may not have necessarily been with uh, how they filmed it or anything but writing. Am I right? I, I don't know. I, like, the villain sucks in that movie. I don't know how an extended release would Empress? fix that. You know what I mean? Is she sorceress? Yeah, Enchantress. Enchantress. Yeah, she's not a good villain. Um, and just, I don't, like Maybe if they included more character stuff they might have cut out i would enjoy it more like if the characters themselves were good enough to compensate for a lackluster villain like guardians of the galaxy then maybe like the but the only time that i've actually seen empress be a cool character was um in young justice well she's not a good character here (laughs) Yeah. Although, there's one cool scene with her, I, I won't spoil it for you, but when they first introduce her, how she changes into Enchantress, that's kind of cool. But other than that, she's a weak villain. Um, maybe they're just going to include more Joker stuff, because apparently there was a whole lot that they cut out <laughs> of him. <laughs> Here's a bunch of condoms I put in your locker. <laughs> just like the Joker did. Um, <laughs> I know, isn't that stuff weird? Uh, like... You- all the stuff that I, they re- I read about him doing, I'm like, none of that's very Joker-ish. That's just sick. Like, I don't get it. <laughs> Did you see, like, some of the memes that they put out? Like, uh, <laughs> like Jared Leto was just like, I put a bunch of condoms in people's lockers, and everyone's just like, oh, my God, that is the scariest thing ever. Like, <laughs> just, like, totally blowing it over. I was like, rather <laughs> amused by that stuff. Like, he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write, like, I wasn't here so that people think it wasn't me. <laughs> like... <laughs> now again, as I'll, as I'll keep reiterating, you haven't seen the movie yet. You're, yeah, I haven't seen it, but I know. I, Just I, so that we're doesn't super mean clear. that I can't uh, appreciate a good joke. <laughs> no, I know. But his Joker's actually, I kind of liked it. If they want to put more of him in there, I'd be okay with it. Well, I mean... I don't, I mean, his Joker, I think, is very... Not... The Heath Ledger Joker, when he came out, people... We're kind of shat crapping on it, it when bad. it. What? <laughs> what? They shat on it bad. <laughs> yeah, when the first images came out, people were like, oh, I'm losing their minds. And then they saw the movie, and everyone thinks he's like the best Joker now. This Joker was like divisive the entire way through, and now that the movie's out, it hasn't fixed anything. People are still either love him or hate him. Hmm. I'm kind of just okay with him. Like, so if they have more of him in there, I'd be fine with it. But, um, but yeah, I don't know what they're going to really include. Maybe the extended cut's going to be like the Daredevil director's cut. It, like, fills up some holes, but then opens up, like, five others. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Daredevil I do, too. I, I actually, like, I like the Daredevil, or, uh, Daredevil on its own. I, I think it's fun. Is it good? No, but it's fun. It came out in a weird time. You can't blame it for that. Yeah, 2003 was not necessarily a great time for these big superhero things. They're all fine on their feet. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. Like, some things that, like, the movie doesn't explain really at all is, like, Killer Croc in that movie. He, you don't 
don't try, don't go in the movie if you're a Killer Croc fan, which nobody is. But if people were, don't go in there for that. Um, Katana is a character they don't do anything with. Um, I actually really liked Captain Boomerang for as little as he was in it. Maybe if they had more of him, I'd be happy. But I don't know. He was actually, yeah, he's just, I liked him quite a bit in that. One positive that I heard about it was that uh, it's like the first time in years that we've actually had like authentic Will Smith. Yeah, he's good in it. Woo, I, he's, I mean, I don't care for the character Deadshot that much, but movie Deadshot, I, I was, I kind of liked him. I think Will Smith did a good job. Well, I, okay. I, yeah. Did you ever see? This is going to be a really small story. I don't really have much to say on it, but it's something I'm happy about. Have you ever seen the movie Enchanted with Amy Adams? I actually missed that one, and I'm really sad I did. It's a charming little movie, all right? I, I want to watch I, it. I really do, but it's hard to find. I think if you watched it now, the day and age we're in, it might not be as entertaining as it was at the time because it's just taking the whole Disney princess trope thing and turning it on its head, you know? Mm-hmm. But I really like that movie, and they're making a sequel called Disenchanted, and I'm excited about it. <laughs> I saw Ella Enchanted. That's not what I'm talking about. But isn't it like kind of the same thing? No, oh. I don't think so. I've only seen parts of Ella Enchanted, oh. but pretty much the whole thing of Enchanted is like she's like a Disney cartoon princess, and she comes into the real world. Oh, that's what disaster movie makes fun of. In the God damn you for bringing that up. <laughs> Yeah, they make fun but of yes. it in, like, a single still. <laughs> yes, they, they do make fun of that movie. But, yeah, the whole thing is, yeah, like, she's a Disney princess in the real world and the humor that comes from that. I find it as a cute little movie. I'm glad they're getting a sequel. That's all I really have to say about it. All right. Okay, so did you watch um, the Pirates teaser? I did. And it's in... Thoughts? Uh, I'm going to say the same thing when we get to the Power Rangers uh mm-hmm. talk um teaser trailers yeah. is what a trailer would be 10 years ago <laughs> <laughs> because it shows you a little bit it shows uh-huh. you like uh characters uh a little bit of you know it shows hey come watch this movie because we have this cool thing and then this cool thing and ooh this thing that you remember that's a trailer like a trailer isn't an eight minute thing that spoils the plot in the fucking middle beginning, middle and end. Like I don't want to watch the movie in eight minutes. Like, Are you a <laughs> fan of the pirate series? I, I like the first two a lot. Like, mm-hmm. I think pirates of the Caribbean works when it's like this swashbuckling adventure, but mm-hmm. the more that it gets so bogged down with this, like, gods and fantasy epic stuff it kind of gets a little tired yeah i think the third one especially kind of like buckled under the weight of this giant mythology they built up yeah i i mean i i agree i I couldn't make it past 15 minutes into four but (laughs) it's okay i just i don't care that much about it i saw it on a flight and I turned it off the second Barbosa showed up with his faggy little wig and everything. I'm like, <laughs> you're my favorite character. How'd you do that? Well, he's coming back in the new one, I think. <laughs> That's Maybe fine. they'll redeem him. Uh, but, like, that teaser was pretty cool. Uh, you know how much I like Javier Bardem. Yeah, here's the thing, though. Okay. And I, doing this I Anton like... Chigurh with fucking what's-his-name from <laughs> Skyfall. A little bit. Like... I like Barbosa, but my favorite character in the series is uh, Davy Jones. I, I, and I, I can see that. His character reminds me a little bit of that, but not in a good way, more of like a we're just copying kind of way. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. Um, yeah, I was so sad when they killed Davy Jones. I was like, not my Davy! But, <laughs> but in this new movie, uh, Orlando Bloom's coming back. Well, I mean, he has to get work at some point. Yes. Um, and the, I guess the kid that he tells him, like, find Jack Sparrow for me is supposed to be Orlando Bloom's kid. Yeah, I had, I'd heard that, and that's fine. But Keira Knightley isn't in it, as far as I know, which is what? weird. Yeah. Did, did they just, like, kill her off or something? <laughs> I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't, like... I'm, I like I'll, I'll see it, right? I like, um... 
I like Javier Bardem. I'm sure he'll be super entertaining. I like Jack Sparrow, kind of. He's never been, like, my favorite part of the series to me. Yeah. Um, and I like, like, I do like Barbosa, so I'll, I'll see it. But the idea of, like, Orlando Bloom being the new Davy Jones, I, I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, the third one did, it, it ended with this, like, teen, oh, excuse me, this, like, teen movie, like, oh, we have to do true love, and, like, oh, uh, like, uh, I thought this was about pirates. He, uh, I, I like the scene of Barbosa marrying them while they're fighting. I thought that was kind of a cool no, scene. No, 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 no. That was cool. The, I'm talking about the end end. <laughs> where he's like, I have to leave, and I'm, I'll be back every ten years. Like, <laughs> like that's just, how just, like, yeah. over the head. Like, just beating you with a hammer of, like, they're in love, don't you know that? Okay, yeah, that was pretty stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, the marriage uh, thing? That was awesome. But yeah, I mean, I, I'll i see it. Um, all right, so the Power Rangers. Uh, <clears throat> or as I like to call it, the Fantastic Chronicle 4. Or the Chronicle Breakfast Club. Right. Like, the fucking first thing that came to mind was, this looks like Chronicle. <laughs> it does look a lot like Chronicle. Um, <laughs> and the fact that they're all, like, in detention or something on a Saturday. Yeah. And they're all like, one's like a nerd, one's a, I don't know, a dykey chick. I don't know. The point is. Which I'm yes, like, it's... no. Huh? I'm like, hello. I, I don't know. What do you think of the trailer, though? As, like, as its own thing. It looks cool. What do you think of it? It looks cool. It, I mean, it's a, uh, I like the, the darker tone it's going because I guess it's just the trend with these teen movies. You got to get a little dark, but I. You know, it looks fantastic. Yeah, like, I'm I'm of two minds about it, right? On one hand, I completely agree it looks like several things we've seen before <laughs> thrown together. I, yeah, I'm not saying it doesn't, it looks like Chronicle, yes. But comparing it to what's come before as a Power Rangers thing, I'm intrigued. Yeah, I you mean, know? The, the, like, the only thing... Uh, that really even tells you that it's a Power Rangers thing is the little notes, the the Go Go Power Ranger thing. Yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> like even when like at the end where they show the suit coming onto his body, mm-hmm. there's not enough of it, and like the suits look nothing like they did originally, which good for them. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, there's like hints of it, but like. Just with that still, like, we're not the still, but just that little clip where it's coming onto his body and it's like half finished. Uh-huh. The only thing that lets you know it's Power Rangers is the Go Go Power Rangers tone, but it's in this like sort of uh, piano setting on a keyboard. Uh-huh. And it sound, I mean, it's it looks really good. I'm really interested to see where they're going with this. And um. Oh god damn it! I just had her name. What uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Banks. Banks? She looks cool as hell. I I keep telling you, like nothing they've put out about this movie has like turned me off. It's just made me more interested. I've loved pretty much everything they've been releasing of this movie. Yeah, I I I I was all like, yeah, I don't care. I don't care. Like not downer, but just completely just like not care, caring at all about it. And uh-huh. now I'm I'm kind of looking forward to this. Like that might be the one that I see in the theater. Like, yeah, I'm okay. really intrigued. And then you know, you've got like Brian Cranston as Zordon. Yeah. Hey, I like Cranston. And uh, they cast Bill Hader as Alpha Five. Everyone loves Bill Hader. Yeah, I just I everything they do, I'm like I'm totally down with it. I can't hate it. Yeah. Um. Uh, let's see. Uh. Yeah, I. I don't see movies in theaters that that often anymore because it's just kind of a pain in the ass to go there and like there's a lot of good movies like truly good movies like nice little small movies that I want to see but I don't want the theater experience for those I want like the solitude and the just for me experience for some of those movies but like the Star Wars and the Marvel shit I want to see that in the theater and Power Rangers is going to be one of those what do you think the chances are that they'll have a Goldar in it? Isn't that like the gargoyle thing? <laughs> the golden guy with the blue dog face. 
Um, if Goldar is in it, you wouldn't recognize him until they, you know, until they actually say his name. No, I want him to be in it, but to be the exact same suit and performance as the original show. <laughs> Next to this new Rita, I'll be like, hey, what's going on, Rita? How are we going to stop the Rangers? Like, just really crappy and over the top. I, do, do, uh, do you remember the opening sequence to the original Power Rangers? The movie or the show? The show. Yeah, isn't like Rita like coming out of a, the garbage can? Yeah, and... but like, Zordon says... Alpha 5, go find me five angsty <laughs> teens. <laughs> he says teens with attitude, which these guys have. Angsty teens with attitude, and they're like, they've substituted attitude with, like, melancholy. <laughs> no, no, the teens in the original show were pussies. They Let's were, call they it were, what it they is. Were like, they were like, uh, and they were like 90s bad, bad kids. They are like, more no, they weren't even that. They were they were never doing anything bad. They were gymnasts who were helping out rec centers. <laughs> oh, oh, what's his name? Um, Turner Broadcasting Network. What's his name? Ah, oh, shit. The, the guy Ooh. behind. The guy behind fucking Planeteers. Captain Planets. Uh, no, like the guy. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> okay. Just, like, he just like whitewashed the shit out of a lot of these things. Where just, they were like family-friendly angsty teens and shit like that. Oh. Well, the point is, I think these kids look cool. They do. Um, it is weird. Okay, look. I'm not gonna... I don't know how to comment on this without sounding weird. Is it weird to you they switched up some of the races? Uh, I don't I don't mind it. Like, honestly, I don't I mind didn't it. I didn't remember. say I minded it, but it's something I totally noticed, too. Like, I... All I remember was the Black Ranger was the black guy. The Asian ranger was the yellow girl, <laughs> and the gr girly girl wore pink. Everyone else was white, yeah. Everyone else was white. The blue and red one were white. <laughs> and this one, the blue one, is the black guy. Um, I think the yellow ranger is some other ethnicity. It's not, it's just something I noticed. I'm just saying that. It's not something I'm saying is bad or good. But when I saw it, I was like, well, that's different. To be fair, it's more culturally progressive. Instead of making the black one black, the Asian one yellow, and... <laughs> no, they should make it even worse. Like, just go wholeheartedly <laughs> into that. <laughs> oh, yeah, like that small scene in the cobbler. <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> All right, so Power Rangers looks good. I'm excited. Yeah. All right, the last piece of news is just the stuff surrounding the new Wolverine movie, Logan. I'm, I'm really curious to see how much of the old man Logan story that they're going to take. Okay. I kind of think not really that much. It kind of seems yeah. like they're not, like, I don't, they kept saying that, like, in interviews, like, old man Logan, I really don't think it's, it's going to be probably, old man Logan. It's probably just going to be Logan being old. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they'll probably say, that's what we meant. You guys thought we meant the comic book? No. Like, we meant old man Logan, he's an old man. We're not liars. Like, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to them getting a new guy into this, because as much as I love Hugh Jackman, you know, fucking hulking the shit up, you know, shit up and doing good. I'm, I, I want to see someone come in with like this new sense of happiness when he plays this character and send like I know like there's so much training and there's this terrible diet that comes with it that I realize at this point is just eating him. <laughs> yeah, but Hugh Jackman, he's not like Jack Craig. Like he loves playing this character. Like. It, Oh, like yeah, even in interviews, like he loves playing Logan. Like he's he holds this character really dear to his heart. If he wants to keep playing it, I'll watch it. But I'd be fine with them rebooting it too. Yeah, and um, the picture of uh, Patrick Stewart looked pretty cool. That's just Patrick Stewart without makeup on. <laughs> I mean, look, because I think they're saying that like he's got like not Alzheimer's, but he's kind of like lost touch with reality and stuff. Hmm. Which is, I kind of like. I don't think he's going to be the villain of the movie, but I think he's going to be the threat. Yeah. Like like, uh, I, like in the comics well, where him and Magneto merged. What? Oh, you don't know that? At some what? point, at some point Patrick Stewart and Magneto like merged minds and then he became this like 
giant hulked up looking Magneto guy. No, I don't. It's I dumb. don't think that. It's really dumb. I, I think it's gonna be more that he's like, as with old age, like he's not mentally there, and it's gonna be some people using his powers for evil, and he's gonna have to be killed to be put down. That's what I think. Oh man. Because I think this is going to be his last time as Professor X, Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Again, I don't think he's going to be, like, willingly evil. I think someone's using him. Because they have villains set for the movie. But they've kind of said that he's not in control of his powers anymore and how that's messing with him. And that's why he looks so haggard in the picture. Ooh. Interesting. Um, and, yeah, like, Wolverine doesn't have his healing power anymore or something. Which they kind of did in the, the Wolverine. But maybe mm-hmm. it'll be... Not by weird heart robots like in that movie. Huh. But uh, I was watching, I told you, I was watching X-Men Apocalypse the other day, which I know that you're not crazy about, but I'm not. I kind of think they should just reboot this series, don't you? I've been, I've been saying this since Deadpool, <laughs> that when the, when the universes finally come together... I just want Deadpool to walk through the portal, get on his knees, and just scream into the ether, finally. <laughs> no, I but I mean, like, happen. <laughs> I like these, I like the FX, I like the Fox X-Men I, movies, I, right? I do, too, like, because but the hate their is so out of whack. Mm-hmm. Some of the actors aren't, aren't really feeling it anymore, like, Jennifer Lawrence clearly is done being Mystique. I... I love J Law, but I hope she never comes into this movie again. <laughs> she looks so bored in that movie. Her, her, she's terrible in that movie. Like, like she's just sitting there walking around, going, oh, "Fine, I just do this one more line." Like that's how she is for the entire thing. And Michael Fassbender, not to the same degree. No, but, but you could see him getting there. I think like in interviews like. I can't, not that I think that he thinks he's better than the material, but I just get the feeling he maybe wants to do more serious things. If he's, that makes sense. Not, not that he like, <clears throat> giving a performance, because I, I really like him as Magneto. Yeah, me, um, me too. But, I mean, James McAvoy, however, loves being Professor X, and I would like to see him continue, but, I, like I said, the continuity is so fucking jacked up right now, and they don't even know, I think, what they're doing with this next movie. I think they should just restart the whole series recast everybody and just start from scratch i mean i i mean uh, michael fassbender's been saying this for like the past i don't know five years or so and i I don't blame him because he's a fantastic actor and uh, james mcavoy he's just having the time of his life in these movies and that's cool to see i just get this shit right (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like we they, they 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 made up for X3. All right, they made up for that. But X-Men Apocalypse wasn't the big thing that everyone was hoping it to be. Yeah, but I don't think it ruined things either. No, I don't I mean I don't think so. Like you know me and my hyperbole all the time is like, yeah, it ruined the whole thing. Like it didn't. It's just sort of like a misstep. Yeah. But uh, I think with uh, Logan, they're going to... I think they're uh, going to get back right on track. I don't know. I just, like... Logan takes place in the year 2027 or 23. Wow, they, they couldn't have gone to, like, 2100 or something? But how old is Patrick Stewart's character? <laughs> <laughs> he was in... 20s in the 1960s in X-Men First Class, and he's still kicking around. Come on. Hey, what what year did the future of uh, Days of Future Past take place in? I thought they just said, like, the not-too-distant future or something. Somewhere in time and space? The <laughs> Um, But, yeah, I mean, whatever they can do, they just make it a good movie, and I, I have hopes. Right. But I just, um, so many weird continuity things that bother me. Like the fact that like they keep doing like ten years after the last one. Stop doing that. <laughs> like it's okay to go like two years. Hey, look at Star Trek. They could have 
fucking did like you know you know like at the end of their journey they did it like smack dab in the middle of their their voyage like it just makes it feel weird that like and like days of future past quicksilver's living with his mom and then 10 years later he's still living with his mom and he looks exactly the same just stuff like that irks me and i'm like if you guys are just fucking restarted everything pick the characters you want to use right don't, don't you find that weird in uh apocalypse like quicksilver's probably almost 30 <laughs> <laughs> he's still living in the basement playing games it's not yeah it's not endearing it's sick stop yeah, it yeah in the fir- in in a uh, days of future past it was really funny and it apocalypse like a t- it's a little weird <laughs> at a job help support your mother kid all right <laughs> That's about all I got for um, I news. have a little piece of non-news, really. Did you see that uh, Daniel Craig was just like, oh, well, maybe I won't slash my wrists. Did you see that? <sighs> yeah, I saw the thing you post on Facebook. I'm done with him. Dude, I, I just want him to get back to making shit he wants to make. Shit or get off the pot, Craig, all right? <laughs> like, you're, dude, don't make, don't turn into Roger Moore, man. You're old. I don't want you, like, it was weird when Daniel Craig was sitting there, like, when he banged gorgeous, age, correct, you know, age, you know, fine, just around his age, banging her two days, or, like, the day of her husband's funeral. That's fucked up, but it was age appropriate. Then he gets with, like, some 27-year-old. Ew. (laughs) What? I don't want another movie like Spectre, and I don't no. want another performance like that from no. a James Bond. Like, huh? like <laughs> I, I, all I can picture is like the next one is gonna have like Jennifer Lawrence, and it's just gonna be Daniel Craig and <laughs> Lawrence just fucking phoning it in for like two hours on screen. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Some people were saying that his whole saying that was just a way to coerce Sony into giving him more money. I think it was him honestly saying, I don't want to do another Bond movie. I don't know. Either way, I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of him bitching. Either do the movie or don't. Do another Uh, Dragon Tattoo movie, dude. I don't even want him doing that anymore. That's how much I hate him (laughs) right now. (laughs) I don't want him touching that franchise anymore either. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I... I'm done with Daniel Craig and his bitching. That's all I have to say about him. Um... If he's going to be in another movie, if they really want him that badly as Bond, I'd rather they just recast. But if they want to get him back so badly, they need to basically tie him to that chair with the seat cut out of the bottom and, like, crack him in the nuts like Lashif did and say, if you're going to be in this movie, give a shit. <laughs> give us a performance that matters. <laughs> Do you expect me to talk? No, we just expect you to act. <laughs> 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 we expect head, you to give a shit. The head of Sony is a Bond villain, probably. <laughs> All right. Are you ready so, to move on to this? To our movie is the Cobbler. The Cobbler. Now I'm gonna be honest. At first, I thought this was like Adam Sandler or some sort of like thing where a pie comes into play. <laughs> what? Like, you know, like a peach cobbler. <laughs> like that okay. has something to do with a the pie. They also are people who work with shoes. <laughs> well, now I know that. <laughs> this movie, if anything, taught you that a cobbler is more than just a dessert. <laughs> yes. Yes, it did. This okay. movie is a giant piece of shit. It's so mean-spirited. Incredibly upsetting. Like, god damn, dude. Like, I just felt... I felt nasty. Like, like I just watched a crime. I did, actually. I watched several crimes take place in this movie. Several crimes. Okay. The basic plot is Adam Sandler... And it starts out actually kind of interesting, yeah, right? Yeah, I was pretty on board. When it, like, he plays a guy who is a cobbler. He took over his dad's business after his dad kind of left the family. And that stuff, I actually kind of liked when it showed him, like, actually doing the shoe stuff. Dude, that was a gorgeous scene. I was like, this could be something. 
Then they bring in this weird element where, oh, he's a magic cobbler, where if he puts on people's shoes, he becomes them. And then he uses that to commit crimes. And here's the thing. Like, when he becomes Method Man, like, I, I like seeing Method Man in movies for some reason. Um, but, like, anyway, the second he, you know, he starts to realize that he can be other people, if it didn't star Adam Sandler, this could have been, like, the most heartfelt, cute movie ever. Like, this could have gone into some really good human places. But it didn't because Adam Sandler's involved. Yeah. Yep. How was work? Work was the uh, same as every other day. Ten and a half. Got some big feet there, kid. I'm big boned. Yo, shoe man. Come on, let's go, man. Time is money. I need these fixed shoe, man. And I need them tonight. Close at six. Close when I get my shoes. Just playing with your shoe, man. See you at six. Are you kidding me? Ten and a half. It's the stitcher. I could be anybody I want. My boyfriend wanted me to chop these off. Yeah, you are. Thank you. You there? Yeah. Come here. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Shop's closed half the time. Acting all crazy. I know where this is going. I've seen it before. You have not seen this before. Trust me. Hi. Can I help you? We're trying to stop real estate developers from forcing the regular people out. If you don't walk out of here right now, I am going to burn this whole place to the ground. We need people like you to get involved, Max. How did you hear all of this? Look, I have a special ability to see stuff I shouldn't. What the? Hey. privilege you walk in another man's shoes but it's also a responsibility you are a guardian souls you are the cop you mr you okay huh? oh, oh, don't eat me please don't eat me huh? i'm not i'm not gonna eat you all right are you ready so, to move on to this two our movie is the cobbler the cobbler now I'm gonna be honest. At first, I thought this was like Adam Sandler, some sort of like thing where a pie comes into play. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, you know, like a peach cobbler. <laughs> like that has something to do with a pie. <laughs> they also are people who work with shoes. <laughs> well, now I know that. <laughs> <laughs> this movie, if anything, taught you that a cobbler is more than just a dessert. <laughs> yes. Yes, it did. This movie is a giant piece of shit. It's so mean-spirited. Incredibly upsetting. Like, god damn, dude. Like, I just felt... I felt nasty. Like, like I just watched a crime... I did, actually. I watched several crimes take place in this movie. Several crimes. Okay. The basic plot is Adam Sandler... And it starts out actually kind of interesting, yeah, right? Yeah, I was pretty on board. When it, like, he plays a guy who is a cobbler. He took over his dad's business after his dad kind of left the family. And that stuff I actually kind of liked. When it showed him like actually doing the shoe stuff... Dude, that was a gorgeous scene. I was like, this could... Then they bring in this element where oh, he's a magic cobbler where if he puts on people's shoes he becomes them and then he uses that to commit crimes and here's the thing like when he becomes method man but like, i like seeing method man in movies for some reason um but like anyway the second he you know he starts to realize that he can be other people 
if it didn't star Adam Sandler, this could have been like the most heartfelt, cute movie ever. Like this could have gone into some really good human places, but it didn't because Adam Sandler's involved. Yeah. Yep. Did you ever see uh, that Michael Keaton movie Spotlight? No, not yet. I meant to. I same director. It. It's the same director as this movie. Oh. So what you're saying is he did a good movie immediately after he did this. I I don't this. <sighs> I, I, this movie was so weird. Like, I, like I said, I did like the start of it, even though it was, oh, like, it was this movie a, could have been called, I thought of two alternate titles, besides The Cobbler. One is Jewish, exclamation point. <laughs> because it is a very Jewy movie. Oh, it is so Jewy. <laughs> the music is almost like a depressing version of the Curb Your Enthusiasm soundtrack. Kind of. Like, blah, blah, blah. like it was just it was weird to watch and he plays this overtly jewish kind of schlemiel if you will um and the other title i gave it was uh pickles and pears yeah you know i i know that this movie thinks that him eating pickles was cute <laughs> like, oh, he's gonna eat pickles like yeah this is a cute thing isn't it no and then they just like give an excuse for why he's eating pickles through the whole movie at the end I'm like, eat a dick, movie. Um, like, what did I, you... I have a bone to pick with that fucking end, by the way, but we'll get there soon. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, really quick, what are some things that you liked about it? Um, alright, the, the beginning? Like, the, uh -huh. op the opening scene is... It, it looks like it's gonna be, like, some nice little indie movie. Like, it takes place in a turn-of-the-century... Uh, Brooklyn? I think. We're talking about the opening opening scene. The opening opening. Like, it, it's this turn of the century Brooklyn, like, room where there's just, like, a bunch of really Jewish people. And they're <laughs> yes. talking about, uh, like, how the the landlords are trying to push them out and they're, you know, they're pricing them out of their place, really. Which, shit like that happened a lot to Jewish people back then. So that was pretty cool. That was a pretty accurate depiction of how Jews are forced out of neighborhoods. Uh -huh. um, the uh, like the very first, in, like still in the turn of the century thing where he's doing the shoe repair thing, that looked absolutely gorgeous. Like that would like I've never been interested at all in shoe repair, but <laughs> that scene made me go. Hey, this is pretty neat, you know? You didn't know what they were called. Huh? You're so not interested in it, you didn't even know that they were called cobblers. I know, but now I'm like, hey, these guys are pretty cool. Um, Steve Buscemi? He's, yes. He's yeah. playing a, like, not a dumb character. Or, Up until the end reveal, I liked him quite a bit. Right, like, he plays a normal person, which is very against type, or, type for him in all of these San, uh, Sandler movies. Yeah, he's just a barber that lives next door to Adam Sandler and their buddies. Yeah, um... I tend to enjoy a Day in the Life movies. I think they're pretty nice to watch. Like, um... Punch Drunk Love. That's sort of a Day in the Life thing where things kind of get out of hand. I like that movie. It's fun. Um, I enjoy Method Man for some strange reason. Yeah, I, I think he's pretty cool, but he immediately... And this is kind of where the movie stops giving me things to like. <laughs> where Method Man, just on a dime, just turned into the biggest dickhead ever. Yeah, that ties into a bigger problem I think the movie has, but yes. Racism? Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, and just getting into it, like, uh, it kind of won me back right in the reveal that he's now another person when he tries on Method Man's shoes. And another person? Huh? Ever seen a Master of Disguise? Say it again? Have you ever seen Master of Disguise? Yeah. When he's, I, I don't know, don't worry about it. It's just a movie, it's another... Adam Sandler group, I think, Happy Madison, 
movie about becoming other people, but continue. Um, but yeah, it kind of won me back after Method Man was a giant tool bag. Uh, you know, he becomes Method Man, like he's he's experiencing people's lives in their shoes. You know, like you can't judge someone until so you walk them out in their shoes, sort of thing. I get that. That's what they make you think it's right. about, but because it's just about him committing crimes. Right. As a like people. the movie is going to be cuz he's just a poor schlub and he's bored with his life. He kind of hates his life. His mom's got severe like dementia. Like she abuses um and like I, you you think it's going to go into a really human nice place. And then immediately, like with, like, cause you know this is gonna happen. Like he's gonna wear wear a pair of women's shoes just to see what it's like. Like you know what's gonna happen. However, and I'm not above laughing at myself or other trans people, but you take a dude with just some fucking makeup and then make fun of that. And like, that's the joke. That's not a joke. That's that's old. That's like what he was. That's all of his movies. That's all like, of them. Like, like, I know, and that's a running trend with him. Like, 10 years ago, you could get away with that still. That's just. That's not how the world works now. You have to be clever with those jokes. I, um. I like, <laughs> I like Buscemi. I like the lady who played his mother, even though she was in it very briefly. Yeah. Um, the scene where he first tries on the shoes, I thought was pretty amusing. Um, especially when he becomes the dead guy. Oh, that was so funny. <laughs> had a laugh out of me. That was good. Yeah. Uh, everything else in this movie is awful. It like everything we've said about Adam Sandler movies is in play here, right? Like yes, it is. Except this is the more serious version of it. They trick you in the beginning into thinking it might be something more than it is. It's it's not. Like it's... at least with Ridiculous Six, you knew right off the bat this was going to be terrible. Yeah, like I was. Like, cause uh, I'd say the first what ten minutes of this gives you a vibe that it's gonna be something like Punch Drunk Love, mm. where it's gonna be a good little character piece. Like it's gonna talk about what it's like to be other people, um, and and Adam Sandler's actually acting. Kind of. Here's the thing. Like he was, but at the same time, his character wasn't like fleshed out very well. We don't really know why he's doing the things he does like he says that he's like taking care of his dad's shop but they i don't like it's like the script was written for somebody younger because see buscemi's character is like you can still find out what you want to do with your life he's like 50 years old all right i know that was so weird i mean it i guess it kind like it doesn't still make sense <clears throat> but the ending reveal kind of makes that understandable why steve buscemi says that but, I'm saying um, what I want to do with my life. And I'm like, your, ha your life is half over. Like, Just and, do what you've been doing. Right, and then this trend that Adam Sandler always gets this hot, beautiful woman. Again, yep. Adam Sandler's like 50, and he looks fucking schlubby as hell with his <laughs> unkempt fucking, like, midnight shadow on his face. Like, it, and he looks like garbage. Uh, he looks like trailer trash garbage. And he's the... like, hey, why don't you go talk to that hot model chick? I'm like, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Like, you're not pretty. She's gorgeous, and you are not anything resembling that. Her and then the girl he actually gets with. I knew that was going to happen, too. Yeah. I was like, he's not going to be with a good-looking girl at the end of this. Uh... Um, the movie's hateful. Like, Dude, it's so mean. <laughs> it's weirdly racist. Like... What, okay, what you're talking about, yes, he makes fun of trans people, which is weird and not cool. And again, not funny, because no. it's not like he does anything interesting. Right. Like, um, if you just make it funny and make it interesting, I will laugh. And then he, like, becomes an Asian guy and then goes to Chinatown. Oh, and he actually says, so he's like, racist. I can't believe I'm in Chinatown. He's like, oh, I have an accent. And I'm like, could you not? <laughs> what? And he goes, oh, I have an accent. I'm like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> The Chinatown before? I don't understand why you needed that. Yeah, like what made him go like, oh, I'm an Asian guy. Let me go to Chinatown. And when he wants to hit somebody, of course he becomes the black guy. Yeah, like at least, at least, because I was ex actually expecting them to do this. We're just 
like after he's like checking his face out where he just you just hear the zipper <laughs> like I was actually expecting them to immediately go there I was like the camera their dicks are bigger <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like like it's, it's so weird because when he's putting on their people's shoes one of the personas he had was like this bald biker guy yeah I didn't know what the hell that was my point was, he could have been that character to intimidate somebody. He didn't have to be the black guy. I know, but of course, I Adam know. Was... What? Say it again? Like, Adam Sandler's weird, racist mind had to take it there. Oh, Where, my like, God. To intimidate somebody, you'd want to be black, right? They're intimidating. They're essentially intimidating. Yeah, like, see, and I actually heard, like, a stand-up joke talking about this, like, stereotypes are negative to everyone but in stand-up comedy or comedy in general the big black guy is probably the most like hated person because they're always the one being intimidating and that's just furthering the negative stereotype and that's what this movie does it furthers the stereotype of black men are inherently scary but this one is though to be fair and to be fair <laughs> method man is a really intimidating person <laughs> Through this whole movie. And how he's just like this terrible fucking gangster guy. Yeah, like okay, his whole plot. Okay, did you ever see the movie uh, Thanks for Rewinding or something or Rewind Be after rewind. watching? The one with Jack Black. Be kind, rewind. Yeah, did you see that? Yeah. Okay, this movie kind of reminds me of that where you think the premise going in is like, oh, we messed up these tapes and now we them, but the plot is actually that they're like filming a movie about a trumpet player's life yeah <laughs> which isn't really shown in the trailers that much that's kind of like this like you think the whole movie is just him putting on shoes and committing awful crimes but it's actually about like people like getting moved out of their houses and being bought up by like land developers who are run by the mob or something but that's like hardly even in the movie it takes up the last like third of it like you for like but like they they mention that but then you just kind of forget that that's even in the movie. And then they just, and it's, I don't even know if, it might be the third, but to be honest, like, like in the last part of the second act and the first part of the third act, I was on my phone. I'm just like, I'm done with this movie. <laughs> so was I. Like the whole, like the ending scene when he's kind of putting his plan into play where He's become the old guy who's trying to get moved out of the apartment, and then he's setting up the mob lady. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what the hell was going on because I was on my phone the whole time. I kept looking <laughs> up, what's happening? <laughs> like, this movie beat the interest out of me. It's like, I'm just like, you know, this movie's not going to do anything. Let's see what's on Facebook. Yep. <laughs> like, I would rather see the mean spirited shit on Facebook than I would in this movie. <laughs> Here's some of the meanness in this movie. <clears throat> Not like, okay, they don't really explain too well why he needs to be other people to do some of these things. Because, uh, yeah. like, what, he's just swinging on swings. I'm like, you didn't need the power to do that. But <laughs> one of the things he does is he signs and dashes like a fucking prick. And he does yeah. it as a black guy. Yes! <laughs> does that, which is fucked up. And then he, um, he commits a murder at one point. <laughs> I mean, not exactly, but he does kill Red Method Man. Oh, yeah, he does. And then his father cleans up after him, I guess, which is fucked up. Um, and then his poor mother has, like, dementia or something, or Alzheimer's. Dude, that was so mean. And she, I mean, look, like, she doesn't it do it. was sweet for her. But it's manipulative and oh weird. Oh, God. He, he puts on his father's shoes and becomes his father to give his mother, like, one last dinner. And then, like... I should have known it was gonna do this, but oh, I was shocked I, when it happened. I knew it was gonna happen immediately. Like as soon as like he's like, you know, sitting there putting her in bed, I'm like, she's gonna die. I didn't. Uh, she's gonna die. I, was, I knew that. Like, I should have expected that because I was thinking like, how are they gonna confront this in the story? Like, how is is the mom gonna wake up and be like, oh, I was with your dad? Is he gonna call her crazy? How are they gonna like well, deal with this <laughs> shit? Easy way. Killer. Like, they just, like I can only imagine what it was like in the writing room. It was like, so they just had this good night. So what are we gonna do tomorrow? Um, killer. Like, I guess we can't think of anything else to do. 
<laughs> How are we going to um, deal with like her confronting that she thought she saw her husband, we him won't. knowing that it was him and not wanting to tell her the truth? How are we going to deal with that? We won't. I don't know, kill her. <laughs> Like, God, dude, that was just so manipulative and mean. Like, it was nice for her, but... Dude, you're a fucking scumbag. It's a good thing she didn't have to wake up the next morning and deal with the emotional fallout from that. Yeah. Uh, and then... Yeah, so then the big reveal... Oh, his father's played by Dustin Hoffman, which... He wasn't bad in it, but no. it, it didn't need him. No, I mean, it's... like it's He's Dustin Hoffman. You're gonna get a good performance, even if he's phoning it in. I don't know. Little Fockers, he was pretty bad in. Oh yeah, I do, I always forget that movie exists. I wish I wish that I could. <laughs> oh, a crime that he commits is not not rape. He doesn't rape a girl. Thank God. But he could have like, easily done it. Huh? He could have easily done it, but thank God he didn't. It's essentially the scene from Revenge of the Nerds when she thinks she's with her boyfriend in a Darth Vader mask, but it's the nerd. Yeah. It's not rape, but it's not right either, right? Like, like it's kind of rape. <laughs> she's showing her body to somebody she thinks is somebody else, and he knowingly is going along with it. Yeah, like, in Revenge of the Nerds, that's totally rape. But <laughs> <laughs> That's totally rape. But in this, it's skirting the line. But if you notice, the only, the only fucking thing that makes him stop is he has to take off the shoes in order to do it. Yeah. And he's like, no, I can't do this. I'm like, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> He's a monster. And then, like, the movie tries to make us feel like... No, I uh, hated him all the way through. No, but I mean, like, they make this weird joke where her boyfriend's actually, like, bisexual. That wasn't... Like, that was such a non-joke. I didn't even know why they mentioned it. I guess so we don't feel bad that he's doing this. Like, oh, yeah, but her boyfriend's fooling around with guys, so she deserves this now you know what i mean like it's just such a weird writing choice i know like it could have just been a girl like uh, what i gathered from that was he's cheating on her but Mm -hmm. i'm also a person who realizes that it's 2016 and not Mm -hmm. like 1998 (laughs) even if he's cheating on her she didn't deserve to have her trust manipulated like that no no, and then yeah they end on a weird joke where she's like it's boys night for him he's like (laughs) this is for free like Fuck you, Adam Sandler. Just <laughs> go to hell. You go to hell and you die. <laughs> like, God, there, there's just so much messed up with this thing. Uh, okay. Let's uh, see. Did, uh, Dustin Hoffman, Mean Spirited. Uh, no one's dead. Oh, uh, this is just sort of like a side note. Like, the girl that Method Man was beating and also dating. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I think she's absolutely gorgeous, and she's on Orange is the New Black, which I don't care for anymore, but... I don't, uh, the yeah. movie Joy, with Jennifer Lawrence. She was in that, wasn't she? Yeah, did you see that? I saw, piece, uh, I saw pieces of, I, I think I saw like the first part, but I had to do something and forgot. Alright, I like it. I heard good things. But anyway. <laughs> but yeah, like, she's absolutely gorgeous. And then Method Man dies. Nobody cares. And nobody gives a shit. Um, it was kind of amusing. Only because uh, what came before it was just terrible, terribleness. Was uh, when he's telling the cops that he murdered Method Man. <laughs> like, it's only funny... Because it's the first time in the entire movie where he's actually like, yeah, I actually did something wrong, and I'm trying to make up for it. <laughs> and then, of course, his father cleaned up the murder for him. His father is responsible for him not growing as a character. Yeah, like, the big reveal, spoiler alert, not that anybody would ever watch this, but if they do, Steve Buscemi's character is actually his father, which is even also fucked up that he let his wife think he was gone this whole time when he's out there living a life right yeah like you know you know at what point i got angry <clears throat> is when he's saying eat the pickle like i don't want the pickle eat the pickle but i no, i really don't want the pickle like you need it for when you transform and i'm like you <laughs> fuck <laughs> and it's like eat a dick movie that's not clever <laughs> yeah they try and like I don't, they said it at the end where 
they're superheroes, but they're not doing any good. Yeah, like, all I could see was, like, so... First off, they rip off Spider-Man. <clears throat> like, you don't get to Uncle Ben the shit. <laughs> but, like, apart from growing as a character, as, as yourself, I see no benefit into invading other people's lives. Exactly. Like, I don't know why he needed <clears throat> to do those things that he did. Yeah, I... If Dustin Hoffman were to have spent 30 seconds explaining why there's a benefit to invading people's lives, I might have been on board. But no! To being an emotionally abusive monster. <laughs> like, this is just such manipulative terribleness. And, like, it's... They, the ending is so bizarre. Like, he takes him into his, like, bat cave of shoes. Yeah, it's like, it just, it just got... It just got so crazy. He's explained to him, like, the importance of Goblin. <laughs> like, he's talking about it like they're going to be fighting crime or something. Oh, but it's not what do. Adam Sandler committed a sexual assault. He murdered somebody. And his dad was just being a neglectful father for the past 30 years. <laughs> Yeah, and he kidnapped and tortured somebody before he <laughs> killed him. And all he's doing is cleaning up his son's murders now. I don't. It's just, just and then like, like he's saying how he can't walk around out in the public because people are trying to get him. And then he drives a limo that has a license plate cobbler. Like I thought you were trying to be inconspicuous, <laughs> or could have just like not. walked out the door with someone else's shoes. I, I don't I don't know why could he never see his wife this whole time why do you have to let her think he was just gone and then she died dude I don't know like god this, this movie is just it left such a bad taste in my mouth I'm just laughing now because of how freaking ridiculous it is <laughs> It's like the horrible shit that happens and it ends on this weird note where they're like, we're going to be out there cobbling from now on. Like, doing what? <laughs> like, I, I, I guess uh, invading people's personal privacy. Ruining more people's lives. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what this movie wanted from me. I, you gave me this terrible person that you want me to like but he doesn't have a single redeeming value uh -uh. he's he's uninterested in his own life he's not trying to better himself in any way he realizes that he could be other people and then just start saying you know I can I can actually uh, invade people's crime he dines and dash he kidnaps, tortures, and kills somebody. He, he steals a car. He steals someone else's shoes. Being a big black guy. Yeah, he tries to uh, steal someone's watches to pay for his own mother's headstone. Like this movie is just an hour and a like an hour and forty seven minutes of just pure unpleasantness. I feel like he's an unaware sociopath. Like. He just needed to be aware of what he was doing, and I think he would have been, like, Dexter at the end or something. But even then, I'm not sure he learned anything at the end. <laughs> All he learned was that now he has his dad to clean up his crimes. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know what this movie... Like, 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 I already expected him to not grow as a character. But even still, it didn't happen, and I'm still disappointed. I was shocked. I said the movie had such a cool opening and like I didn't expect the whole magic stuff going into it. And then when it happened, I did like I said, I did like the scene of him trying on shoes in the very beginning. Hell yeah. But once the transvestite when he like stuck his hand on the pants, I was like, here we go. This is gonna be the I rest know, of the like, movie. Like the second it like part of me was like, please don't make this a cross dresser. Please don't make the God damn it. <laughs> yeah, and like but even then, I was like, okay, maybe it's going to be, like, just some stupid lowbrow comedy. And then it goes dark really fast. <laughs> like, this yeah, he does horrible things and has no repercussions after. He gets a hot girlfriend at the end and he reconciles with his father, who seems not really sad at all that he let his wife 
descend into madness alone. Like, it's almost as if this movie didn't know what the hell it wanted to be. I think that's exactly what happened. <laughs> I, I, God, it's just... It's like a mishmash of indie movie, terrible, dated 80s rape fantasy, magic superhero thing. Like, I don't know what the fuck this thing wanted to be. But goddamn, did it spend some time on committing crimes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, unrepentant crimes. He feels no remorse over, really. No. Like, this is just so mean spirited. Like, when that girl came back at the end, the one that he, like, was in the shower with, how would he not be, like, totally ashamed that he betrayed someone's trust to look at them naked? Because he's Adam Sandler. And he continues That's to make this shit year after year. So, uh, you excited for his next one? Whatever it's gonna be? <laughs> like, I know he has another one that Netflix is doing out. Uh, like, but, uh, uh, I want The Cobbler 2, and I want it to be just a flat-out horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> just go all the way. I want away. to play a game. But the scene when, like, you know, like how he's like, the dad's like, let me tell you the story of how I got the stupid stitching thing at the very end. <laughs> I want the next scene to be Adam Sandler to, like, snap his own father's neck. <laughs> <laughs> like, Clean up like, after his dad, dad. all this money. What? <laughs> Clean up after his dad, dad. Now I got all of his barbershop money, too. Like... <laughs> 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 and then he finds, like, the actual character in the Caribbean and, like, kills him, too. He's like, gotta tie up his loose ends. <laughs> and then he's just going around murdering and raping for the entire movie. <laughs> like, god damn, like, I just feel gross. <laughs> yeah, this was a piece of garbage. Like, I honestly, like, I, you had already told me about this, like, I think the first time you saw it, and I remembered a piece of it, but I, there was no way to prepare me for this. I've never seen this movie before. I thought you said you did. Oh, this is my first time watching it. Oh. But, oh. <laughs> I didn't get into it. It would suck. That's why I picked it. I didn't know for sure, though. Thank God Adam Sandler has yet to disappoint me <laughs> and disappoint me. You know what's going to suck? Is if, uh... Is if Adam Sandler's next movie is actually going to be featured on our rele relief review? <laughs> See how right. I did that segue? Yep. <laughs> uh, but... Yeah, uh, like, this movie's terrible. Like, god damn it, don't watch this ever. Um, but that's, that's kind of all we have, all I have to say about it, really. Yeah, same here. <laughs> um, well, getting on with it, we have a special treat that we're going to be doing for the foreseeable future. We are going to keep doing the revenge reviews. But we're also going to finally do what we've wanted to do for years, which was review good movies. <laughs> not the cobbler. That are not the cobbler. Um, and for the relief review, we're going to do the, re the relief reviews as its own show. It's going to be its own like half hour show. And we're still going to do the full hour revenge reviews. So that's just going to be a neat little thing that we're going to be doing. And for the relief review, we're going to do one of my favorite movies. And I really hope that you haven't seen it. And if you have, well, get a treat because we're watching it again. We're <laughs> going to watch 2003's uh, South Korean movie, Old Boy. Oh, I've never seen it. I love the shit out of that movie. <laughs> I think I've seen it like eight times. <laughs> Alright, so that's what we're watching next? That's that's our, gonna be our relief review. Okay. For our revenge review. God. Now, I want to ask you a question. If there is a dating website that has enough pull to make its own movie, what movie do you think that would be, Christian? 
I don't even know. <laughs> well, I didn't either until I was just scrolling through one day Netflix and I just saw it and I'm like, oh no, I have to watch this. There's no way that this is good. And it's not. It's terrible. Um, but I just had to watch it. This is... This whole movie is about um, change who you are in every facet of life so that you can be happy and find a man. I agree. <laughs> but we are going to watch Christian Mingle. I have never even heard of that. <laughs> it's on Netflix, and boy, is it a doozy. <laughs> I'm excited. Like, it's, it's not overtly bad, but it's just so backwards <laughs> any movie that has my name in the title I'm a little interested in dude uh, this is I, I hope we get to this re review quick because I'm really curious to see what you'll say but okay. I, I saw it once and I gotta say I can't wait to watch it again because it was so unintentionally funny yeah, I'm looking forward to it yeah. so that's what we have we got old boy and we got Christian Mingle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. And with that, as always, everybody, is our show. I hope you enjoyed this show because, god damn it, I had a lot of fun recording this one. So did I. This is a good hey, show. Hey. What'd you say? I said I hate you, Adam Sandler. Dude, oh, I hate you, but God damn it! thank you for giving us movies to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought that would ever come out of my mouth, but it did. <laughs> but yeah, um, until next time, I bid you adieu, Christian Scott. You as well. All right, everybody. Good night.